Well, good morning, everyone, once again. And uh, we're happy to be back here in uh, beautiful Huntsville, Alabama, uh, where we've made this kind of our second home for AUSA. Uh, as many of you know, we made the decision uh, a couple of years ago to uh, move uh, the symposium from Fort Lauderdale to Huntsville to better align ourselves uh, and with the current fiscal environment as well as conference uh, rules in the United States Army. And the support we've received for this move has been overwhelming and we very much appreciate the support that the association has received from the Army and specifically from Army Materiel Command, the Training and Doctrine Command, and the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. The City of Huntsville, uh, Huntsville Convention and Visitors Bureau, the local Chamber of Commerce, the Von Braun Convention Center have given us terrific support and we're very grateful and uh, glad to be back here uh, with all of you. Uh, Mayor Tommy Battle of Huntsville could not be with us this morning, but he asked to show a short video. So at this time, I'd like to show uh, Mayor Battle's video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mayor Tommy Battle, and I want to personally welcome you to the 2016 AUSA Symposium in Huntsville. Huntsville is a city committed to the defense of our country. We have a long-standing partnership with our armed forces and consider ourselves part of Team Redstone. We are globally known as the Rocket City and NASA's rocket program, which took us to the moon, has its roots in the U.S. Army. In Huntsville, you will find a fascinating array of intellect and technology. You will also find we like to have a lot of fun. From craft breweries to hiking trails, arts, culture, great music, and legendary barbecue, we hope you will find time to explore all that Huntsville has to offer. Have a great week and enjoy the symposium. Thank you to Mayor Battle. I'd like to give a very special thank you to our Redstone Huntsville chapter who has provided us with invaluable assistance and support over several years now. And uh, many of you know that this outfit is the perennial best chapter in all of AUSA and ably led by President John Wright, and we thank you for your enthusiastic support. In fact, uh, one of the key events that this organization uh, held was last night. Uh, they held a young professionals reception hosted uh, by the Yellowhammer Brewery downtown, uh, led by uh, Leo Gilliland, the young professional chair for the chapter. 125 attended, 125 young professionals and more importantly, 31 of them became members of the Association of the United States Army. So uh, thank you to the Huntsville chapter. Before we get started this morning, uh, I want to recognize the hard work and effort uh, and coordination that's been put into this event. Uh, General Dennis Vai's team at AMC, General Dave Perkins' team at TRADOC, and Ms. Katrina McFarland's team at ASALT have provided great input and contributions, and we thank all of you uh, for your support in getting this uh, agenda together. I want to note the pres presence of representatives from our international armies and other services, as well as members of the press that are with us uh, for the next few days. Thank you for joining us as well. As many of you know, uh, Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley has made readiness uh, of the Army his number one priority, and he emphasizes there is no other number one priority for the Army other than readiness. And that's why we've selected the theme this year, building readiness with the emphasis on readiness for today and tomorrow. And I think you'll see that that's very appropriate for uh, what's gonna be discussed. We have a rich and robust agenda, well over 100 speakers here uh, for the next few days. But remember, this is only as good as the questions that you all ask of these subject matter experts and senior Army leaders. So. Uh, get your questions ready as we go forward. And while you're here, uh, please make sure to visit the exhibit hall and the exhibition floor. The exhibitors here tell the other half of the story of Army readiness, and they're a very important part of the Global Force Symposium and Exposition. This year, you'll also see some new initiatives that we've added, including uh, today's ROTC luncheon, a new military, health, uh, military family program focused on uh, health care, a STEM education program, and some prestigious new awards that General Vi will be presenting uh, later in the week. 
We also have uh, the Soldier Athletes of the Year with us, the Army Soldier Athletes of the Year. Uh, two of them are here this morning. Uh, we have uh, the Female Athlete of the, War of the Year, First Lieutenant Female uh, or April Ortenza, and the Army Coach of the Year, Captain Roy Locklear. Where are they? Guys, would you stand up, please, so we can recognize you? The male athlete of the year is Captain Alexander Driscoll, and he's fighting his way through the Dallas airport right now, and uh, he'll join us later. Uh, these folks will be in the exhibit hall near the Army exhibit, and if you want to interact with them and get their autograph, please do it there. Now, it's my great pleasure and privilege uh, to introduce a great American, uh, the President of the Association of the United States Army, General Gordon R. Sullivan. Sir. Thanks a lot, folks. Welcome to Huntsville. Uh, nice to see so many of you up bright and early this morning. People are trickling in for one reason or another. Uh, first, uh, I want to pay my respects to the city of Huntsville, city council, and all the supporters we have here. And Mayor Battle spoke to us this morning by tape. Uh, I echo what uh, General Swan said three years ago. This is the third year we've been here. We're delighted, and we intend to stay. Uh, so. Uh, General and Mrs. Vi, thanks a lot for your gracious uh, hospitality. Uh, you reached out to us in very powerful ways, and uh, you and certainly your colleague, uh, General Perkins, who's up testifying this morning, he'll be here later. And we'll get to thank him for his support. And of course, uh, the Honorable uh, Katrina uh, McFarland, the Acting Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. Thanks a lot to you and your team for making this meeting what it is. So to all of you, thanks a lot. I, uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to just uh, talk about something personal which uh, I think it's about time I did it, so I'm going to do it. Uh, it's probably the worst kept secret in the Army, but uh, I intend to uh, retire from the Association of the United States Army on uh, the last day of June, and I forget, I forgot the little ditty my mother taught me a long time ago, how many days there are in June, so let's just say it's the last day in June of this year, after 18, that'll be 18 and a half years with the association, and I think that's about long enough for anybody's patience. Uh, so, uh, at that point, uh, I will turn it over to the now Executive Vice President of the Association, uh, who I think you all know, or most of you do, General Carter Ham. Now, General Ham is in the audience, and I'd just like him to stand up so you can give him a nice hand. As all of you know, General Ham is a distinguished leader and tested in both peace and war. Um, retired actually as the commanding uh, general of AFRICOM. And since he's been retired, he's done uh, one of the most important studies that's been done recently on the organization of the Army going forward. America's Army Active Guard and Reserve, and that uh, study is now being studied more by the department now that they have it, 
and implement it in ways which will, in fact, uh, influence the Army into the future, as he will influence this association moving forward. Now, for me, it's been a uh, labor of love. Uh, I've been around the Army since 1955 in one form or another, and uh, I came on active duty in 1959, retired in 95, 36 years on active duty, plus 18, some here, you can do the arithmetic. Um, it's my whole life, and I will go from this job to become the, uh, well, which I am now anyway, the uh, chairman of the board of the Army Museum, National Museum of the United States Army, and the Army Historical Foundation, and we will, in fact, build a museum which the Congress of the United States told us in 1814 to build. So, <laughs> I mean, it's only 200 and some years. They didn't give us any money, but they told us to build it, so we finally have the money, or most of it anyway, uh, to do. And uh, in my view, you can't think of the journey of the American people from the 1600s to today without thinking about the United States Army. The United States Army, in one form or another, since 1636, when the militia was organized by the, by the uh, Mass Bay Colony to protect the settlers in that colony. To this very day, the United States Army has been intimately involved with the American journey in countless important ways. And we will finally have the opportunity to tell that story to the American people. And it is an epic story. And everyone in this room, in some way or another, is involved with that telling of that story. So let me just tell all of you, those of you in uniform, out of uniform, family members, industry, people from other armies who are here, people from other services who might be here, how much I appreciate your support over these last years and what a great trip it's been for me and how much I have enjoyed it. Thanks a lot to all of you. And for one reason or another, I'll probably see you in my new life with the Army Museum. Thanks a lot.